Hey guys, this is a writing blog number 29. I know I haven't written anything in a while, but I have been writing. Um, I have it like, it's mostly been like a stanza here, a stanza there. And I've been working on editing these video um, blogs together where it's going to be like visuals and poetry at the same time as opposed to me just talking to the camera like I am right now. Um, however, I did just write, like literally just a second ago, a poem. Um, and I have to go to work in like 10 minutes to teach kids. So I'm going to have to try to get this done in all one shot, so I apologize if there are any mess ups or whatever, but um, yeah, I just wrote this and um, well, I guess that's all there is to it. I hope you like it. It's uh, writing blog number 29. It's called Swallowing an Atom Bomb. Swallowing an Atom Bomb. Breathing in the shivering of my cheeks as the hair stands straight up on my arms, as I try to release my tense stomach to prevent its churning, rocky, pushing pressure, putting pressure in my pressure points. For this boat is rocking, and I'm trying to prevent the salt water from spilling over. I take hold of my chest to calm my beating, thundering, blood-pumping organ that needs nurturing, babying, sweet talk, reassurance, that this is only the beginning. Reminding myself to remember my reading, it said, Instead of apprehension, though, you need to shift your emotions so that you can feel a positive sense of anticipation. A change is coming, and I can feel it. It's a big one, and I'm now only sensing the vibrations before the earthquake eruption. Change is good, change is better, change is best. As a child, I couldn't stand change. It showed me that I wasn't in control. I remember when my family got a new van with its white complexion and shiny reflection, clean fabric, seat sheets, rounded windows, a sleek family traveling minivan. I rejected it and cried over the loss of our worn out, faded blue square box van the melted crayon memories of 12-hour driving trips to Cape Cod, the large walkie-talkies with industrial-sized antennae stick sticking out of the window as ours corresponded with another, braving the blizzards of the path from Syracuse to Burlington, Vermont. It didn't seem fair that this endearing junker, which had put so many miles into my family's outings, errands, and adventures, was so easily replaced with something new and shiny, something with no experience, something with no history. Looking back, I see that we could have gotten stuck on the side of the road with a burnt out transmission. It was on its way out. It served its purpose. It did all it could for us. And now it was time to begin anew, give something else a chance. Allow it to build a history with us, too. As I suck down these acidic thoughts, I try to concentrate on the sweetness. As I can feel my cheeks getting hot with longing for the old, I suck in new breath through my nostrils, my nose reminding me of how we first began. Now, the process over again, but this time, not under the shadow of a recent collision and blackout to be awoken with screaming. No, this time, I begin with fresh food, fresh ideas, and a feigned fresh attitude, and hope that the attitude will soon be true. I will keep driving forward. I will keep salt swallowing the salt water, imagining its broth, to flush out the fear, the apprehension, the weakness. For now, I must be brave and trust in the acidic, salty medicine. Trust that there's good reasons for this anxious shaking and shivering. For now, I must consciously switch my thoughts of sweaty, explosive nights to calm reflection. I hold back the expungible worries and focus on vanquishing the poisons that got us here. To exercise my strength in preparation for the oncoming earthquake, whether it be to form a new continent bringing me to Aquarius, or to divide us right at the splitting point. My stabilizers must be ready, 
so I don't fall through the cracks. I focus on mastering my pride, subduing the horned voices, tearing up my goals. I bring attention to me. I surround myself with so much love and prosperity, you fall to your knees. By then, I'll know whether I can still see you from where I stand.